Okay everyone, hello and welcome back to the Science Shack. So this is the last part of the required practical uh, nine stuff, the respiration and um, yeast practical. So hopefully by this point you've done a good few things and if you haven't, I need you to stop and go back and do them. So by this point you should have completed all your pre-practical questions. You basically should have written all that up because some of the CPACs are being awarded on the basis of those. You should have seen uh, the practical activity. There's a video each for each of those first two stages. So there's pre-practical video, there's the practical video which you should have watched before coming along to this one. They are in order in the playlist, so there's no excuse. Um, you should then also hopefully have seen the specimen data, done a stats test and interpreted the result. If you do need that data again, it is repasted again in this video. So you need to show evidence that you've done that stats test and interpreted the result. Uh, you should have completed a post-practical write-up and questions. And we're going to go through some of the ways to make that really effective in this video. Uh, and also, finally, research an alternative method because we are awarding um, in this practical assessing research, citation of, resource, uh, of um, references and so on and so forth. Okay, So make sure you've done all of that before you carry on past this point. If not, stop now and go back to the bits that you need to complete before you carry on. Okay, good. So I'm assuming if you are still with us, then you have done all those things and we're going to carry on. So the pre-practical thing, you should have in front of you all of your questions right, and your answers, either on the Google Doc or on another form. Um, so what are the independent and dependent variables? This is part of CPAC 2. Well, of course, it's temperature. So we're changing the temperature from 55 to 45, 45 to 55, and the rate of decolorization, not the time taken for methyl blue to decolorize, or kind of, but really it's the rate that we're measuring, okay, that one over time. So control or confounding variables, this will vary, and, and a lot of you will have different results that will all be absolutely valid. Um, so control or confounding variables and how you'll keep them constant in this investigation. So to give you a couple of ideas here, Right, you may have said some different things which are equally valid. So the concentrations and volumes of all the reagents, hopefully you've picked that up from the practical video. Go back and look at that if you haven't done and you've just ploughed on anyway um, for some suggestions of things that you will keep in the same. So concentrations and volumes of all reagents using appropriate measuring equipment. I did talk a little bit about what was appropriate and the best measuring equipment in that practical video. The type of yeast, obviously we just use standard bread yeast um, you can buy from the shop, but obviously you don't want to mix and match with that. Now, obviously, those of you who thought a bit more deeply about the interface between the air and the yeast solution might have thought about, well, maybe the size of the tubes and the surface area of that interface has an impact. Sure, sure it does, but as long as you keep the uh, as long as you keep the that the same across all different experiments, you will still get valid results for that experiment. It might not give you a true answer, in which case you might have to think of an alternative method, which comes later. Right, but that would be something to try and keep the same. And there are many, many others. So we could think about the methyl blue, the concentration of that dye, that stain, okay, and, and how long that could take to to decolorize. Um, all sorts of different things are available to you there. Uh, right. So why do we shake the yeast and the glucose suspension? Well, the very first bit of the uh, instructions we talk about yeast being able to work aerobically and anaerobically. We want to aerate that yeast to make sure that it can work aerobically. However, obviously, if we aerate the methyl blue, it goes back to uh, it goes back to its blue colour a little bit. Okay, and you can think about the chemistry of that in terms of gaining and losing electrons. So we shake it initially, and then we leave it still. So the yeast is respiring aerobically, and then we leave it still. Okay. So what do you need to do to calculate the rate of respiration? We went over this in the first video. That's just one over time. Very easy. And then hopefully you should all have done a nice results table from which you can follow the standard table conventions, independent to the left, dependent to the right, uh, list of sort of uh, repeats coming down, so on and so forth. Right, very very uh, straightforward to do. Okay, this one obviously is a bit bit weird because we've got I mean two categories. So uh, follow table conventions on that. I'm sure you all know how to work the table by now. So then here are the results pasted again. Right, this is actually from a previous year's results. Um, so you've got some wild variation in those that you can see there, okay? Um, so this is obviously three groups doing their five tubes, 
um, you can act, you can assess that and evaluate that as to whether those are uh, valid or you know accurate results based on the subjective nature of this experiment. Again, which we went into a little bit in the practical video, but those are the results we're going to work with. So, is there a significant difference between the two sets of data? Okay, so stats test. What do we do? Well, clearly it's going to be the student's t-test. If you got to that point, great. If you did anything else, then you must have some very tortured stats to, to try and get to that point. Why are we doing it like that? Well, standard reason, we can average all those times and we can get a mean value that we can compare, means and standard deviations. Okay, so there's our equation for the t-test. Now, I did this uh, sort of quite roughly you know, through a mixture of Excel and the calculator on my phone. So you can obviously disagree with the figures if you like. Um, there's our means and our standard deviations as I calculated them, okay, uh, straight out of Excel. Was this significant then, right? So well, what we do, first thing we have to answer the question once we get our T, our, our T value, is is it greater or lower than the critical value? Now the critical value obviously comes from our significance table, now I reckon with 30 bits of data minus 2, you've got 28 degrees of freedom. Okay, we in biology we always work at the uh, 0.05 probability value. Yeah, so the degree, so the significance level of 5% there, um, and I reckon that makes our critical value 2.048. Okay, and working this this out, bringing these through uh, this equation. I got a value of 4.35. Yours is a bit different from that. It's not that big a deal, right? Uh, you might have done it slightly different, around it slightly different, so on and so forth. Um, but our critical value, as you can see, of 2.05 is way below that. So this is more than double our critical value. So basically, we reject the null. This is significant at P0.05. And you can, if you're a little more sophisticated with your stats, look along here and go, well, okay, if, we, if there's any, if, we, if we're, we're confident with a 5% level of uncertainty, right, then uh, what about, you know, only a 2%? So could we be 98% confident that this result is significant? Could we be 99% confident? Could we be 99.9% sure that this result is uh, uh, is uh, significant? And even if we go to this one, 99.9, .9, we get to 3.64, so even our value is higher than that. Okay, so if you want to be a bit more sophisticated, that's fine. For A-level biology, we tend to focus on the 5% uncertainty there, right? So that's what you should have got. Now, as far as answering the questions go, here are the sort of practical questions from the post-practical write-up that you should have done. Here are our answers. So why were we warming up? Why did we put the, the, the tubes in early? We we'll put them into equilibriate, so they reached the required temperature. Um, how did we make, manage to make sure that we kept that the same? What did you actually do? Well, use a thermometer to measure throughout the investigation and heated or added cold hot water right a thermometer just measures temperature doesn't control temperature and the question there is about control so it says here look to gain uh, to gain the mark there must be a reference to measuring the temperature on more than one occasion so continuous and then doing something about it not just going oh look, the temperature is going down okay so um, what would be a suitable control experiment for this well methyl blue and glucose methylene blue and boiled yeast because of course the yeast will be dead Okay, and therefore unable to do respiration, and respiration is really the thing we're investigating. And that's what a good control is, okay? We're basically taking away the thing we're investigating. Uh, to show that glucose did not cause methyl blue to go colourless, or to show that the colour change was due to respiration and the yeast is second mark there. Okay? So uh, mixing with the air and oxygen is number eight. So oxygen oxidizes methylene blue and causes the methyl blue to give up electrons. Okay, so that's basically a little bit about the interface, the idea that the, that methyl blue will go back to being blue, right? Uh, so how does it work? Methylene blue accepts electrons. Um, they come from glucose, from the substrate of the intermediate, or reduced coenzyme. There's a number of answers you can have there. I would accept NADH, FADH as that answer as well. So number 10, as temperature increases, the rate of respiration increases, then decreases. So at this point, we're now uh, explaining what happens in terms of graphs. The fastest are optimum up 40%. Uh, 40 degrees C, right? Uh, so 10B, respiration is faster, more electrons are released, more kinetic energy. It's the standard uh, kinetic energy and temperature answer. More collisions or substrate complexes formed, less time for faster decolorization of methyl blue. Okay, so that's up to 10B. And then our last few, 
on that uh, write-up. And again, if you haven't done this, then I know this is making no sense to you. This is deliberate to make sure you've actually done the questions. Um, so we've got, what is the uh, suitable substrate of carbohydrate, sugar, or named carbohydrate? What do, what do our yeast need uh, in their medium? They need minerals, they need a, a source of protein, something like that, and they need vitamins. <laughs> okay, so what, uh, what are we doing to make sure that they all get what they need, right? We're stirring and, and mixing them to get an even distribution of yeast cells. You might have noticed in my video at the end that some of the yeast cells have actually started to settle to the bottom of the tubes, which obviously means there'll be more activity down there than at the top, which is another explanation for why the colour might have been different right, at various points in the tube. Okay, So simple calculation here, uh, 20, 20.2, and obviously then you've got the single mark there. Um, more competition, less oxygen, less glucose, or sugar or carbohydrate, so ethanol becomes toxic. So this is basically why um, do these yeasts sort of plateau off, why do they stop, and obviously a fall in pH could be an explanation. So those are all reasonable explanations for uh, question 14. Any two out of those are uh, entirely reasonable suggestions. Okay, so that is required practical uh, nine. Uh, obviously a bit weird to do it with you not here, but I hope that has covered most of the points that we need to cover, and I'll see you next time. Okay, I'm going to leave these up here at the end as just an, some suggestions of our alternative method. Okay, essentially what I would have done is anything to do with um, collecting, measuring or doing something with the gases okay so we've got a standard delivery underwater we've got a gas syringe and a thing called a manometer okay so anything sensible on those would have got you that referenced for five point uh, for five b okay right very good see you next time thanks very much